so slow. Hi. Welcome to Citanium Mine. For another Second Chances video. That's fun. Uh, today on the show, we're actually going to be talking about Little Witch in the Woods. Back in 2022, I tried playing this game, and it was ranked last on my best to worst list. I literally thought that it was the worst game of 2022. So, why did I think that? Well, uh, mostly because it was headbangingly uh, boring. It was uh, very, very boring. One of the main complaints I had that I just could never get over was that the little witch, Ellie, moved so slow. I don't know why. I tried it on both PC and on my Xbox, and it was slow. Just, like, meanderingly taking so much time from getting from one screen to the next. It was absolutely, frustratingly slow. That was also not helped by the fact that there's a ton of expository dialogue in it between Ellie and her hat, Virgil, seems to be the two main characters in the game, uh, and that they would often repeat dialogue of what they needed to do near constantly as you're walking very slowly through these woods. Things just take a lot of time to get through this game. But I felt like these might just be technical issues, right? Maybe it's because it had just come out, and it technically is even still in early access, so maybe, maybe, maybe they would fix this. And so, I decided to give it a second chance, which went... Meh! The basic idea of Little Witch in the Woods is that Ellie is on a train, the train gets stopped, she goes off to explore the woods with her aforementioned hat, Virgil, and by the time they get done exploring the woods, the train has taken off without her. So now, she goes back into the woods and finds an old witch's hut, where she can, like, make potions and stuff and eventually meets some colorful characters in the village nearby. Now, my big criteria for second chances is that I want to go further into the game than I did the first time. So I did indeed do that. However, I can't tell you that I finished this one. Metro Exodus, yes, I did finish that. I went through the entire thing. Um, Little Witch in the Woods, I didn't but I probably played twice as much of the game this time as I did the first one. Not a hard metric to reach, uh, but it, it is what I could do before I eventually gave up again. Uh, so let me just explain something. The good stuff. You do not move like a slug anymore. Uh, this has been vastly improved since the last time I played. You actually do get to move at a pretty good clip. That is a, a major issue taken care of. And uh, you also do have a run button. The run button used to pretty much just make you move slightly faster. Now you actually can get around the map and you don't run out of stamina nearly as easily as you used to. That also was a frustration of mine uh, where you would just simply run the hell out of stamina immediately and then have to go at, at an even slower pace. So anyway, I, I have not had a problem with running out of stamina, and the woods seem a little bit easier to explore and access now. So, you know, in general, it has a better user experience. However, some of the other problems remain. Like, for instance, the amount of expository dialogue. Uh, when you eventually do get to the witch's hut, there is this thing that happens where you need to clear out all of the cobwebs in your alchemy lab. You basically have to have a small conversation that's all in text with Virgil after you clean every cobweb. <laughs> and it was bothersome to me before, and it's still there now, 
Uh, but you know what? Sure, just skip. Fast forward through that if you don't really want to get too much into the weeds. You can pretty much still get the story of Little Witch in the Woods without having to read all of the dialogue. Y you get the general gist. We're setting up our little alchemy lab. We're going to meet some of the villagers. We're going to figure out a way to get rid of the root growth that's outside of the village so that we can get in there, and then talk to some people, and they're going to have some quests for us. Figuring out what you're going to do is not as straightforward as you might think. Uh, you will get a quest to basically make a potion or a candy or something like that. And so you go out into the woods and you collect different ingredients. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. If you've ever played a cozy game, uh, you find the resources and then you can make stuff with it. Uh, and then you can take it back to your laboratory. Now the first thing that happens where I reach a stumbling block is extraction. So you have an extractor in the lab, but of course the extractor doesn't work. You need a special part for it. So you have to figure out who you're going to talk to so that you can get the part you need, so that you can get a, a glass jar, so that you can get the extractor to work. You need to have the extractor working so that you can extract the essences from certain herbs that you find in the woods so that you can use them in a potion. Okay, fine, like, maybe a little bit more hand-holding as to, like, where I'm supposed to go or who's supposed to even give me this thing or what they want would have been handy, but okay, no, that's fine, I understand, we're getting used to this, the basic mechanics and meeting people, it, it's fine. But then, Little Witch in the Woods has another stumbling block, which is, because they can't seem to get rid of the tedium, I can only make one extract at a time. Even if I have enough materials to make, like, six extracts, I can't just say, make me six extracts. What you have to do is you have to put the ingredients that are necessary in the extractor, you have to hold down your go button, whatever that is, uh, and make the extract. Then you have to go back into the extractor, you have to put another piece in it, and you have to hold down the button to make the thing again. This translates over when you eventually do the alchemy too, because you can't just make multiple potions even if I have all of the correct ingredients. I have to put the ingredients for one potion in there, then I have to set what the temperature is going to be, then I have to choose the way I'm stirring it, and if I've done all of those correctly, then I get to make the potion that corresponds to that recipe. But then after I make that, I have to go back in and set it all up again to make the next potion, and the next potion, and the next potion, and you just sit there and reassign it over and over again. You might even have to look at your book occasionally to remind yourself what those potion recipes are. There isn't like a quick list or something that you can look at while you're doing this process. So, you know, just get used to doing that repetition over and over again if you need to make multiple potions, which you might if you want to sell those potions, which we will get into in a minute. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is all stuff that really, truly could have been streamlined. Uh, it really did not need to be this tedious. But sometimes life sims have a tendency to want to live in the tedium. I don't understand why. You know, streamlining people, it's not a bad thing. Help. Please. Eventually, after you get used to the initial quests and start to explore a little bit more, you realize that you can get to a village. And the village has a couple of colorful anthropomorphic characters in it, and you can talk to them, and they will give you some quests. Uh, mostly just, uh, please make this many potions, right? And you can fulfill that. The dialogue trees in this are interesting, because you have a basic dialogue tree where you can do chit-chat or shop with them, uh, but then there's also a couple other ones for special dialogues, if it's related to, like, quests, and then fulfilling orders. So... You, you have those laid out. Uh, again, it's one of those things that feels unnecessary 
you could have just put those options in one list rather than have them over multiple ones. Because usually when you get to those special options, it's just like the one thing in those lists. So realistically, you, you could have just put them into one list. It, it just simplify your life, folks. It It did not need to be this overly complex. It's not like you had so many dialogue options that you couldn't make this work. Now, I have been very hard on this game so far, and yeah, I'm I'm gonna apparently be hard on it, but the truth of the matter is, is that I liked the concept of the game. It also looks pretty nice. It, it's a pixel graphic art style, but they do quite a bit with it. Um, it has a certain tone to it that I think is really nice, and it uh, features characters that are, you know, lively and likable. It's pretty bright and colorful, and the general idea of being able to make potions out in the woods is, is a really nice one, which I guess is the reason why the execution of it, not really living up to the concept, is where I reach an impasse. Here's the reason why... I could not recommend this game where I could recommend some other life sims. Outside of the main quest lines that they put you on, there really isn't much other stuff to do. Especially at the beginning. It's very straightforward. One of the things that really endears me to games like a Stardew Valley is not just that there's a, a storyline with, you know, nice characters in a cozy setting and, you know, being able to, you know, fulfill quests and, and go on this journey, but that it does give you a lot of freedom as to what you're doing. You don't have to follow the main quest. In fact, it's kind of thought of that you're going to do a few other things. Maybe one day I'm going to do farming. Maybe one day I'm going to go fishing. Maybe one day I'm going to explore the mines. And yeah, I'll get around to the story too, but it's pretty much open to you to do all of that. Little Witch in the Woods closes off a lot of its environment to you before you can complete any quest lines. And outside of doing those quests, you are pretty much stuck with gathering stuff, there's not really any content outside of it. And this is really where we reach a problem, because if it had provided me with maybe just a few other kinds of activities that were not just the main quest lines and stories, I would have probably stuck with it a little bit more. Because if you start to get a little bothered by constantly having to do these fetch quests for the characters, you could step away from that. You could do something else. But they kind of lock all of that off. You can see other areas of the game where you could eventually get to, but most of it is unavailable until you get the very specific thing that you need in order to grow this vine or destroy these weeds or whatever it happens to be. They lock off good portions of the game, and they really could have kept it far more open at the beginning, or at least give some more areas where there was just stuff to do. Maybe I can grow a little garden. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be huge. Just a, a few little plots, like outside the hut. You know, just a, a few places where, you, oh, look, you can grow a few of these. Look, you, you go out into the woods, you get seeds, you can put the seeds down in the thing. Just, just, some little other activities going around would have been lovely. Besides the, I need to fetch this number of potions for this person so they will help me out so that they can tell me how to complete this new potion so that I can grow this vine so I can get to this new area so that I can get a new quest line. Just a little bit more than that, folks. Just... Uh, a little bit more exploration, a few rewards for going off the beaten path. You know, basic life simulation stuff that you usually expect. But no, it's me, making one potion at a time, and then wandering to the village to sell them, so that somebody can tell me how to make another potion, so that I can access a new area, so that I can go back and make one potion at a time. 
<sighs> Ultimately, I got a quest line to try and figure out where the thorns that had destroyed buildings in the village were coming from. And this led me to something I kind of already mentioned, which is that there is a vine that needs to grow up so that you can get to a new pathway. And I realized that somehow I did not have this recipe yet. And after asking a bunch of the villagers about it, I started to realize that I would now have to be going on a quest line to figure out how to make this new potion so I could grow this one vine so I could get to this new area so that I could uncover the next thing about why the vines are in the village in the first place so that I could move the hell on with the game. And I was like, no, I just no, I am bored again. I am bored. Yes, the game is faster and better optimized, and the UI is improved, but the problem with it is that it is still just very boring and slow, and takes just its, its sweet time to do anything, and that is really where we come to an impasse. And so I can't recommend... Little Witch in the Woods. I did give it a second chance because I, I felt like it deserved that. Even though it was like my least favorite game from 2022, I wanted to give it a second chance because I, I felt like the bones of it could really be something cool. The execution wasn't. And although the execution has improved, the game is still not particularly enjoyable to play. <laughs> it's boring, still. Not slam my head on the table boring, but just meandering. So, that's an improvement? If I were to give you a recommendation for something instead, I would normally turn to something that is potion-related. Because I think one of the big draws of Little Witch in the Woods was the idea of making potions in the woods. There are other potion-based games. The one that I would like to be able to recommend would be Potionomics. But I'm not going to do that only because I actually haven't played the full game of Potionomics. Uh, one day, maybe, we'll probably do a Citanium Mine on it when I do. But the one that I have played is Potion Craft. And Potion Craft is a very interesting game because it is all about the potions. That's it. There's no wandering around. There's no other things that are going on. You are in it to be a potion guy. You are potion man. And you have a little alchemy lab, but it plays very differently than something like Little Witch in the Woods. What you do is basically gather these different ingredients and you use those ingredients to traverse this kind of like minefield that has a bunch of different potion qualities in it. And by using the unique ways that these ingredients move you around this map, you have to take your potion bottle and get to all of the qualities that you want in order to build your potion. It's a little bit hard to explain, but basically it's sort of like a, um, a maze that you're going through, so that you can get to certain potion qualities like health, or poison, or growth, or whatever, and utilize this potion with these certain ingredients and mix it. And then you get these potions. Now, something that's very useful is that if you come up with a way to do this that you think is optimal, using certain ingredients and a certain methodology to get you from point A to point B, where, like, the health is, you can keep it as a recipe, and then you can just make it automatically if you have the necessary ingredients. So you don't have to do this traversal puzzle every single time. If you do it well the first time, and you have those ingredients again, you can just make it instantaneously a second time. And then you go and sell these to your prospective customers who are looking for specific things. 
I need a really powerful health po potion. Oh, I need a poison, but I don't need, like, a really strong poison. I just want to make somebody a little ill. Something like that. And then, if you have a potion that fulfills these requests, you can haggle a bit for it, and then give it to them. And then you get money. You can use the money to get shopkeepers that come along. Maybe they have more unique ingredients that you don't have access to in your garden. Uh, this works really well, and I think the reason why is because the core mechanic of how you're making the potions is pretty interesting and different in how you do that, and it's basically focused on that potion making in particular. So yeah, potion craft, if you happen to uh, be interested in just brewing potions and that's what you want to do, I, I would recommend that game. All right. Um, I actually have a cauldron back there, and I was going to utilize it in order to make potions of my own. But I have no ingredients. So first of all, I have to go out in the woods and get ingredients. But as you all know, I can't actually leave the mine. So, good thing I have a subterranean garden! It's down that pathway. I'm gonna go check it out. There used to be big guardian statues in there. We'll see if they still are. And the little bush people! They look like bushes, and then they jump out at you and try to kill you. One of them is named Todd. Todd! Todd, you down there? Todd? Hey, come, come meet Todd! Hello? You don't want to meet Todd? Jim? Beaufort? Your loss.